Hey, what is up, guys? I am here to give you my WWE Friday Night SmackDown review for December 16th, 2014. Like, the videos just keep coming and coming and coming. This is the big WWE week, so, yeah, it's just how it is. Um, so we get JBL, Tom Phillips, and Michael Cole on commentary. And I think that's the text from the WWE. Yes, it is. Oh, just... All right, anyhow. Um, and we get right off with the match. It was Fandango with Rosa Mendez versus Roman Reigns. This was Roman Reigns' big return um, into in-win action, and I thought it was uh, awesome to see him finally come back. And he hits the Superman punch and the spear on Fandango for the win. Kind of a shame Fandango had to be squashed, but, yeah, it was good stuff. Um, I, a big ho I'm a huge Roman Reigns fan, so I'm pretty happy that, uh, you know, um... That he went over. And then, uh, I think that, what was the next thing that happened? Alright, then they show the SmackDown ad. And this was hilarious. So this is like this, um, therapist, um, that shows you, like, the pictures, like, you know, like the big blobs, and you're supposed to say what you think they are. And they just say Thursday. It, um, big Show was in it. Paige was in it. She just said, Thursday! Um... And the Bella twins were in it, which is Nikki and Bree. Um, and Nikki just covers Bree's mouth so that way she can't say anything. Uh, Rusev was there, and uh, he says something in Russian. And Lana says, um, he says Thursday. They pretty much all say Thursday. Boy, Wyatt says it cool. Um, um, Goldust says it. And uh, I forget which one, but one of them... Um, Oh, um, Adam Rose says it's two bunnies, because it was upside down, and then when he puts it right side up, he's like, oh, it's Thursday. So, uh, and then Dean Ambrose says Thursday, like, um, in the, because he had, like, a Switzerland accent, so, uh, I thought this was an awesome commercial. SmackDown is coming to, is, uh, going to be st starting on January 15th, um, 2014, to be coming on Smack, um, on the show on Thursday, um, and uh, I forgot to mention, too, that this was the 800th episode. Why I forgot is because they didn't make it feel like it was the 800th episode. I thought this would be a better show. They, they literally didn't say anything until now. It pretty much proves what they think of SmackDown. Uh, this was the 800th episode, though. They didn't mention it all night. But I thought, yeah, SmackDown's coming to Thursdays. Um, I've given you my thoughts about it before. So you can you guys can just check that video out. And, yeah, SmackDown's coming on Thursdays. Um... So then Dean, a <coughs> Dean Ambrose comes out to cut a promo. This is the first time we had seen him since uh, Tribute to the... Well, no, since Tables, Ladders, Chairs, and Stairs, TOC. Um, and uh, he comes out and says that he didn't care what he did to Bray Wyatt or what happened to him. He didn't care about wins or losses. All he cared about was beating the hell out of Bray Wyatt. And he says he's not done just yet, that uh, he wants to do more. So he challenges Bray Wyatt to a boot camp match. T tomorrow night on Tribute to the Troops. I have no idea what a boot camp match is. So we'll see what that is. And then uh, Boy Wyatt comes on the screen. And pretty much cuts a weird promo. I kind of forget what he said. Just because it happened. I mean it happened an hour ago. I just forget what he said. But he pretty much I think he said that he would have done more to Dean Ambrose. If he had the chance. You know stuff like that. But I can't wait to see this match. It should be good. Um, but we'll see. I don't know if it's going to be that good. Just because it's on the Tribute to the Troops show. But it should be fine. And then we get Jimmy and Jay, the Usos, and Eric Rowan versus The Miz, Damian Mizdow, and Luke Harper. Um, this match was good, but it was more funny because uh, Damian Mizdow finally got... Te um, he w Miz teased that he... Uh, no, one spot was when The Usos picked up The Miz like they were going to do an atomic drop to him. And Damian Mizdow like, went up on the turnbuckle and went in that same position, which was funny. And then uh, The Miz teased that he was going to tag in Mizdow... While they were dominating, um, one of the, Jake Uso, um, and he tags in Luke Harper instead, and Luke, Damian Mizdow starts mimicking Luke Harper's move, like Luke Harper was doing the gate roll to Jake Uso, and, um, Damian Mizdow do it, and it became an argument, like, it's not, you're supposed to be mimicking me, but it really wasn't an argument, because Damian Mizdow was... Mimicking him by saying what he was saying, so it really wasn't an argument. And JBL on commentary said it's like he's mimicking the Walking Dead. 
which you know because I think he was referencing that Luke Harper looks like someone that would be in The Walking Dead. And I like that he referenced that because um, I've really become a Walking Dead fan. Like, watch my reviews on the my other channel on the Talkinator, which you can subscribe to because I'm a huge Walking Dead fan. Um, and then eventually, Damian Mizdo does get tagged in. He actually, no, he tagged himself in because he was mimicking the Miz. And he was about to do a move and Miz stops him and then he tags himself in. Um, eventually, um, Eric Roman gets the hot tag and the Usos... Take out um, Miz and they dive on no. Take down Miz down and they dive on uh, Harper, and then uh, and they do a double kick to Miz and then Harper goes off the top and does a splash for the win. So it was pretty good stuff. He didn't really sell though, um, because this was filmed on the same day as main event. He didn't really sell the fact that he was just choke slammed by Kane. So I thought that was odd. Um, and then uh, Naomi's backstage and Jimmy Uso comes up and. Uh, Pretty much pumps her up for a Divas Championship match. Says it's going to be a good night. That he was, that she's going to win. And Naomi says she just wants to do this on her own. And uh, Jimmy Uso accepts that. Uh, more gets done with this later. I actually can kind of see where this was going. So then we get Seth Rollins with J&J &J Security versus Ryback. Um, I, w I thought this would have been the main event. So I was like why is this happening early? But then it made sense. Because when Ryback tried to come out. Um, to have the match, um, Rusev attacks him from behind, and he kicks him off the stage, and, um, then afterwards, he does, like, a crate, and he kicks him over the crate, and Rusev stands tall, so he laid out right back here, I thought that made Rusev look really strong, and I thought that was awesome, um, it was actually w worth watching, so then, um, Seth Rollins says, uh, that we should that this is why tr the authority, which is Triple H and Stephanie Man, should be back in power because uh, stuff like that, people get attacked from behind, everything's all chaotic. Um, and then he says like uh, Seth, and then Seth Rollins says uh, that he's gonna take the night off because um, he's been put through hell pretty much for the past couple of days by having tables matches and cage matches. But then Dolph Ziggler comes out and ch and goats pretty much goats Seth Rollins into a match. Saying that like he beat him at Survivor Series and got the authority out of power, um, and um, Seth Rollins accepts because he's in the given mood and he's gonna give him his match. So I thought that was pretty good stuff, and it was good stuff by Dolph Ziggler. The Ascension, which is Connor and Victor, have the same video package again. I just can't wait for the Ascension to come on the main roster. Um, then we get Nikki Bella with Brie Bella defending the Divas Championship against Naomi. This is actually a pretty solid Divas match. Um, Naomi, um, I would like to see uh, become a future Diva, Divas champion because she, she actually had a pretty solid match. Um, during the match, however, Miz comes out and is cheering on Naomi, um, getting her to get into this match. Um, and then uh, Miz is checking on Naomi when she's like laid out on the outside. Um, and then uh, Jimmy Uso comes out and fights off and fights the Miz. And Naomi gets distracted by this, but not by the Miz, which was kind of strange. And then uh, Nikki Bella woes her up for the win. And then Jimmy Uso kind of feels bad. And now it's going to probably lead to some uh, conflict. So I thought this was good. This was actually some good stuff that uh, Jimmy Uso ended up costing uh, Naomi the Divas title. And now it's just going to have more grind games when, and, uh, with, for, with Jimmy Uso when he faces... Uh, and when it's the Usos versus uh, Miz and Mizdow for the Tag Team Championships again. And the match was pretty solid too. So I thought this was good stuff. Then we get Kane versus Adam Rose. Um, Kane beats him again with a choke slam, And the Bunny, who was in a neck brace, gets Tombstone again. Um, and the fans popped for it because they hate the Bunny. So I was pretty happy about this as well. And then uh, Gold and Stardust were backstage. And on Raw Monday night, it's going to be the Christmas show. And Hulk Hogan's going to be dressed up as Santa Claus. They're calling him Ho Ho Hogan. Um, and they say they hate Christmas because they say it's just like another day going around the earth. And that um, they're going to um, take out, they're going to um, ruin Christmas on Monday. So something they're probably going to do a segment with Hulk Hogan and Golden Stardust, which I think should be fine. Um, and then Seth Rollins gets interviewed. And we find out he was the one that him and him, Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman were in cahoots for those attacks on Chris Jericho and John Cena. And he says he's pretty much just going to beat down John Cena until he brings the authority back to power, which uh, makes a lot of sense. 
because they need because they say that no one else can run this show as good as the Authority. And since John Cena is the only one that can bring him back, then he's just gonna keep beating down the Authority, beating down um, Cena, and make sure that he ne that he, and he's make sure that uh, his life's a living hell pretty much until the Authority come back. And then he says that Chris Jericho should have been running Raw, that he, he can't run Raw as good as the Authority. So I thought that was good stuff. Seth Rollins was great tonight. So then we get the match. Dolph Ziggler versus Seth Rollins with J&J &J Security Winside. J&J &J Security being Jamie Noble and uh, Joey Mercury. Um, this was a pretty good match. Seth Rollins does a knee on the outside. And behind the referee back, Jamie Noble cheap shots him. And then uh, Seth Rollins actually is kind of like Seth Rollins is being dominated, but he's actually also when he tries to make to come back, he's also working on the ribs because Seth Rollins had uh, bruised ribs and he drop kicked to the ribs, and then eventually Seth Rollins tries to jump from the apron onto Seth, Dolph Ziggler, but he ends up getting the announce table instead, and then um, Ziggler throws Rollins into the steel steps, ribs first, um, and then Ziggler starts to make a comeback. Rollins comes back, and then. Uh, he goes for an Insiguri, and Ziggler hits a jump in DDT, and Z Rollins kicks out of that. Um, Rollins hits a Insiguri, and then Ziggler kicks out of that. Um, and then uh, Joey Mercury, early in the match, too, had cheap-shotted Ziggler. And then Ziggler hits, like, a face buster um, off the uh, turnbuckle, um, Ziggler, and Rollins kicks out of that. Um, Rollins tries to go for a roll-up. No, Ziggler goes for a roll-up. Um, Rollins kicks out, and the security jumped on the stage, and he tried to knock him off, but he got, they got off the apron before the, uh, the before he hit him, and then Z Z um, Rollins sends Ziggler right into the uh, security, and then um, Ziggler gets Ro Rollins in the win, hits the Fame Master, Rollins kicks out of that, and then um, Ziggler goes for the zigzag, and Joey Mercury's distracting the ref, and Jamie Noble takes a cheap, cheap shot, but the ref still sees it, so he kicks him out of the match, and Seth Rollins gets pissed about this, and gets distracted, and Ziggler hits the zigzag for the win, which I was happy he won. I actually was not expecting him to win, but they kind of did build it up like he did was going to win, because Michael Cole was talking about how Ziggler had never beaten Seth Rollins in a one-on-one -on -one match, so I thought that was awesome that they had him win, and they're really kind of pushing Ziggler, you know, he was the sole survivor in the Survivor Series match, he's been a... Uh, he held the IC title five times. He's a think a five-time IC champion, a five or four-time IC champion. I said, I said it was more than that because it does feel like it was more than that. But he, because I thought he had holding more, but it, it was the U.S. title that he was holding a lot. So I can't wait to see uh, what happens now. Um, and that's my SmackDown review overall. I thought it was a pretty good show. It was cool. Um, I liked seeing Roman Reigns back in action. I liked seeing um. Dean Ambrose and Boy Wyatt, that was good stuff. Um, I liked the ride, I liked Rusev attacking Ryback and the Ziggler Rollins promo and the match they had. Um, the, I liked the Divas Championship match and I liked the six man tag team match. That was pretty good. Everything that was good except for Kane versus Adam Rose, but at least that had something good because the bunny got laid out again. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I'll be back tomorrow to give you my. Uh, WWE tribute to the troops review. I can't wait to. Well, I'm 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 I'll, I'm still gonna give you the review, but um the the show uh, I'll just tell you what I think about the show when I come on here. So that's pretty much it, guys. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't, and see. You